2013. Um, so a little background information about myself. Um, uh, I do both kinds of research. Uh, I do technical research in the lab, um, studying aquatic ecology and biology, but I also do um, data, like data analytics in um, a lot of rare diseases. Um, I like to thank the Jigo Center, Dr. Lai, Chris, and Zeno's Gated Center. I feel like they should be back in front of that. And then um, I like to thank uh, Spark, um, Gina, and Eric and Gunner. Um, so, a little introduction in what is RIG. Um, it's a rare health exchange, and it's an in undergraduate collaborative that assists uh, physicians, experts, and researchers. Um, in uh, kind of getting more information on rare diseases through natural histories. So natural history is the uh, kind of the natural progression of the disease, and we're um, kind of establishing that by uh, creating severity scales in which we can uh, look at symptoms of the disease and uh, see where a patient is along in progression, and we can kind of uh, characterize that disease. Um, the RG is special to the student run and directed, so it's got that natural side to it. Um, right now there's about 60 students or 50 students who um, are involved in the rare disease um, project. Um, and one of the main goals is to increase awareness for the rare disease community by kind of using student, the student body to interact with experts and patients and researchers. Um, quick history and overview. Uh, started in 2009 by Dr. Kisteri Gildar. She's the director of the Center for Rare and Blood Diseases. Um, so, the main outline of this um, whole RHG is that it starts off as a course and we're trying to expand it as a service to the patient community. Um, so, in 2009, we started with five students, two graduate students and three undergrads. And then it grew to 16 students um, in the next year, and then 30, and then in the year after the course, it was 50 students. So you see a big uh, growth in the class, and um, there's been an increased awareness and interest in the rare disease community. Right now, there's two courses offered. The introductory class is offered in spring, and then um, you, it's, if you want to move on to the advanced class, you have to uh, first get that introductory, introductory course. And uh, yeah, uh, they're all trained in medical record assessment. Um, they interact with patient families. Um, they get the clinical transitional seminar series. So um, throughout the course, uh, patients are HIPAA trained, so they're um, very intensely trained to assess medical records. They also get to um, meet patient families and come to the class and speak, and um, also kind of bring the patients there so they can see uh, firsthand experience of what patients are like and um, how disease um, in the rare disease community is actually very um, limited. Um, they also have experts like Dr. Mark Patterson from the NIH who come here and talk to the students, the mayor. Um, they actually published a scientific paper class at the whole on um, seeing if students were capable of doing this and if they're capable of um, assessing medical records and assisting the community. And they were actually published in a paper um, called Defining the National History Assessment and the Ability of College Students to Aid in Characterizing clinical progression of anemic disease type C. So I was the intern for the RIG this summer. And I, I researched congenital hypothyroidism, which is a rare disease. And uh, I started by doing preliminary research um, um, just to find out what CH was about. Um, sorry. <laughs> and um, so I, I didn't really know what it was about at first, but I was able to study it. And um, I finally kind of got all the data, analyzed it, and worked on the severity scale, like in order to create that natural history. We also, um, so now we're working on the course 2012 development. It's what I developed in the summer. I created the curriculum for class, and um, we had about 12 students in the advanced class, so we had about 12 seniors in our class who helped in developing, further developing the severity scale. And now this, this spring, we have a class of about, of about 40 juniors and seniors who are um, um, working on a greater scale um, to assess uh, congenital hypothyroidism records that we've obtained from the Michigan Health Information Network. Um, I also am the founder and president of the 
where ND, which is where the disease plugin entered in. Uh, right now we're working on getting approved by the <coughs> NDL. Um, so we have, we've made like a constitution for it, uh, all scheduled events, budgeting. We have, um, we're still super sensitive to wearing about the diseases. So I'm um, hoping that that will get approved. Um, and we also have an editorial partnership with NORD, which is a national organization for rare disorders, in which um, we help um, update the rare disease database by um, taking outdated versions and updating them by research. Um, so our education outreach and services, what do we offer to the patients? Um, we, so we try to establish good relationships with the patient families so that would, they would you know, come here and interact with our students, but we also provide a service to them. Uh, we give them password encrypted uh, medical electronic health records. We, um, they're free to submit their electronic, their paper records and we turn that into a electronic medical record. And this is really useful because um, on the international uh, companies like Abbott or Cerner, they're um, big in the healthcare industry. They've been transforming it by creating uh, medical records electronically. And this is kind of on a small scale base, but it's free, so it's pretty good. And uh, patients can take this, instead of like 500 pages of medical records, they take one single file to a doctor or hospital, and they're able to um, kind of just use that as a source of information. Uh, this is also useful because now we have students using these medical records that, were, that are de-identified, so information is very classified. Um, so they can use that information to uh, go onto the medical record and look at the symptoms and create more severe skills. We also created a clinical summary of the medical record, which is like a two to three page summary for patients, includes all major hospitalizations, surgeries, and procedures, medications, um, doctor visits, and family history. And this is also useful for the doctor visits and physicians as well. Uh, we also have a student patient working group that we uh, associate in the advanced class. About two to three students work with the family, a patient family. Uh, they call them and, and they email them talking about uh, their kind of their experiences with the disease, and um, they also are able to uh, use that information to help them in um, uh, assisting them in making those medical records. Uh, patient families are also allowed to submit uh, photos, videos, and blogs to us so that we can kind of share that with the class as well. Um, once again, like I said, uh, patients are able to come to our campus and visit. Uh, we give them a tour, uh, take, them out, take them out to lunch, and they're able to come to our class and uh, talk to students. Some other RG features, we have a monthly newsletter to send out to whoever subscribes to it. Uh, that includes some uh, research articles that are written by the students, as well as you know, a rare disease quiz. We also have a website. Um, we have an annual rare disease day where we have um, a few panels, like um, medical panels, on ethics, as well as uh, patient families come to talk to us, and students come to share their experiences with the Um We have the partnerships with the Mission and Health Information Network and the National Organization for Rare Disorders as well. <coughs> All right, so these are some pictures of the course. Um, the top left is a student presenting. Um, there's eight weeks of presenting for the students. And then there's, um, on the top right, you see um, students eating with uh, patients. And then this is the class of last year, last spring. This is some Nima picked up see research that um, students have been doing uh, in the lab. This is Dr. Alvar, this is some undergraduates, and this is uh, two patients who have been coming to our, um, coming to the school pretty often just to you know, talk to the students and kind of see what the research has been doing to them. Um, this was the rare disease day right here, and that's uh, Tyler, who's another patient you visited. Some content information you can visit at www.rarehealthexchange.org. Um, there's an email. You can also contact Dr. Baldar or Mr. Chiron if you want more information. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks.